This is the brand new Polaroid i2, Polaroid's latest camera that offers quite a bit more control and precision than the other cameras in their current lineup. At the time of recording this video, I've had just a couple of days with the camera, so I'm going to be giving you my very early first impressions and photos that I've made with the camera so far. I was super excited and honored when Polaroid reached out and asked if I was interested in checking out the new i2 and shooting with it ahead of the launch. So they sent this camera over to me as a gift along with a nice thoughtful letter and a tote bag. So full disclosure there, this was a gift. Polaroid told me this is my camera to keep. However, that's the extent of everything. No money changed hands. They're not telling me what to say. They just know how passionate I am about shooting instant film and they wanted me to share my thoughts and everything on the camera with all of you. First off, this lens is the sharpest lens they have ever put into a Polaroid camera, and you have built-in manual controls giving you full control over your exposure. I am thrilled that there is no app required in order to access these features like it is on some other cameras. Everything that you have within this camera is accessible just using the display, the built-in buttons, and the selector dial. You have this selector dial on the lens and a function button right here above the power button. These controls will allow you to make all of the changes needed directly on the camera. You also have a flash button right below the power button to activate or deactivate the flash. And on the display of the camera, just by pressing this function button, you're able to cycle through all of the different shooting modes that the camera has. You have auto, aperture priority, shutter priority, manual, multiple exposure, and timer. For the timer, you can set the timer to 3 seconds, 6 seconds, 9 seconds, or 12 seconds. And for multiple exposure, you can select 2, 3, or 4 exposures for one frame. For your manual control over the exposure, your aperture ranges from f8 to f64, and your shutter speeds range from 1 250th of a second to 30 seconds, or bulb, for a longer exposure. When you're dialing in your manual controls, you just use this selector dial here on the lens to make the changes, and to cycle between the shutter speed or the aperture, all you need to do is use the function button right here on the display. Speaking of the display and everything that you can see here, you have a light meter, a battery indicator, a frame counter, and your focusing distance as well. So all of the information you need is right here on the display, as well as inside the viewfinder. The viewfinder is bright and clear, and all of the information you need is clearly visible at the bottom, which is a nice touch. Especially the focusing distance, this is something I look at every single time I make a photo with this camera, just in the bottom of the viewfinder, it's clearly visible what the focus distance is set to. This just assures that the camera isn't focusing on like a wall behind the subject or anything like that. And luckily, the autofocus on this camera is extremely reliable. The camera has a new continuous focus three lens system compared to the hyperfocus two lens system existing in their other cameras. Rather than choosing between two distance ranges, the camera will actually grab focus using the center point of the viewfinder when you half press the shutter button. Like most modern cameras, you just half press the shutter button, lock in your focus, and then recompose your shot. Another important thing to keep in mind with that is that when you do use the half press, if you're using any of the auto exposure controls like aperture priority, shutter priority, or full auto, that's also going to enable the AEL or auto exposure lock, so the camera isn't going to change the exposure on you when you recompose. And again, I've been extremely impressed with the autofocus on the camera. I've shot some stuff where the subject that I was focusing on was kind of just narrow within the frame and I expected the camera to grab focus way behind the subject, but every time it just locks on exactly where I want it to. And since I can't actually see through the lens, I'm looking through this viewfinder here, I'm not seeing that focus change as I'm looking through the viewfinder. Being able to see that distance scale at the bottom just giving me peace of mind knowing exactly how far away it's focusing, that alone is just super handy. As for the focusing distance, you have infinity up to 0.4 meters. If your subject is closer than 0.4 meters, you'll get a little warning inside the viewfinder, letting you know that the subject is less than 0.4 meters away, so that way you'll know to back up and refocus. Another important thing to mention on this lens is the filter threads. You have a 49 millimeter filter thread directly on the lens here. At the time of recording, I have no idea if Polaroid intends on releasing their own filters like they have with other cameras, but the fact that they're using a universal system right here, it's not some like proprietary thing where you have to only buy Polaroid filters. You can use all kinds of different filters that already exist out there in the 49 millimeter thread. Everything from ND filters, color filters, diffusion filters, 
the possibilities here are endless, so to see them go with something universal like this, I'm really happy to see that. Right behind the selector dial, you have an exposure compensation dial. You can select everything from negative two stops to plus two stops, and there's one third increments between each stop, and it has a hard click to each one. That way you can dial in exactly how you want your exposure compensation. You have a rechargeable battery inside the camera that's charged via this USB-C port on the back. Your film release door is right here on the left side and on the bottom of the camera. As expected, you've got a quarter 20 mount so you can mount it to a tripod. The camera comes with this very short strap, which at first I thought, how useful is that really going to be? It's not a neck strap and I can't really uh, do much with this thing, but I have found it to actually be pretty useful just for getting a secure grip on the camera, especially one handed. Uh, for me, I've found that if I go through the top of the strap like this and then just loop it around, it adds this nice secure way of holding the camera one handed and uh, it doesn't feel like it's going to be dropped at all. And another nice thing about this, again, it's not proprietary in terms of you know it's not stuck to the camera it just uses these standard strap lugs on the side if i want to throw any other strap on here i can it doesn't take those like lanyard style straps where you have to feed it through and then loop it through uh, just standard strap lugs you can use whatever strap you want so that's a bonus this camera can actually use all three versions of polaroid film in this size when you're loading film into the camera, you can select SX70, 600, or iType. I'm used to shooting SX70 or 600 film in my Polaroid cameras that I've had up to this point. So using iType film, I've been really happy with the results and the colors that I've been getting, as well as the black and white film too. I also shot some expired 600 film that I've had for a while, and like I mentioned earlier, when you load the camera, you need to set the actual film type that you're using, which I forgot to do when I first loaded this pack, so that's probably why my exposures were off here. Just always remember to set the film type that you're using. Now at the time of recording, I still don't know what this camera is going to retail for, but I think it's safe to assume it's going to be priced higher than the other cameras in Polaroid's lineup, just given everything it has. The lens, the autofocus, the full manual controls, etc. If you're a Polaroid enthusiast, if you want all of the manual control that you can get within the camera, if you want the sharpest results from a Polaroid, if you want that new autofocusing system, this is specifically being made for those people who want to have that entire full range of control. Now to make this extra crystal clear because I know how this kind of thing goes, I am not here to tell you to go out and buy this camera right now. I have no stakes in this. I have no commission that I make on sales of this camera. There's no affiliate links that you're going to find down below to this camera. I have no care in the world what another photographer uses or doesn't use. My only goal with this video is to simply share what's new with this camera and hopefully provide some answers for anyone who might be considering it. That way they can make the best decision specifically for themselves. That is all. Of course, I want to thank Polaroid for sending me the i2 as well as the tote bag and the letter that came along with it. It means the world. I'm extremely grateful and I'm going to continue using this camera for many years to come because I've had a lot of fun with it. If you have any questions of your own or thoughts on the i2 that you'd like to share, leave them in the comments down below. We can keep the conversation going, but that's it for today. So thank you guys for watching. I love you and I'll see you next time.